Hello and welcome back to the Medieval Wars Grand Finals and today we have got game number four between RVK and Tyrant. This is a one versus one and it's with the Viper and Stark. So we do have Viper over to the east of the map in red. He's playing as Aztecs and over to the other side of the map in the sort of west-ish area we've got RVK Stark in green playing as Mayans. Now this is a pretty interesting matchup. I mean, Mayans and Aztecs, very, very popular civilizations for Arena, which is our map. And they do tend to have pretty different play styles on this map as well. Now, I know for a fact that the Viper is very fond of the Mayans, so it's interesting to me that he's chosen to go Aztecs. And we'll see exactly why in a little bit, what he's kind of thinking with this. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes. So this map... Obviously, as I said, Arena. We've got quite a few relics around, and we're probably going to see some pretty typical Arena play. You've got to bear in mind that Aztecs do benefit from plus 33% gold from relics. So, collecting up as many relics as the Viper can is going to give him a very substantial gold boost throughout the game. It's, well, beginning with these first two relics in his base, um... He'd be mad not to take them, really. So I imagine once we get up to the Castle Age, which is what both these guys are going to do straight away, no uh, feudal action or fast castling, I imagine, um, then we'll see some monks coming out trying to take relics and maybe trying to claim some of the centre area as well. There's a lot of different strategies you can see on this game, on this map even. Um, notably castle drops and the like, mainly monks as well. But monks, castle drops, things like that do tend to crop up a lot in, um, in Arena. Now, for Aztecs, doing a castle drop isn't that great. I mean, it's okay if you want to bust down their walls, then dropping a castle and breaking down the wall and getting really aggressive, it can work out. But the problem is, you can't really make Jaguar Warriors because Jaguar Warriors aren't that effective at raiding. Um, they're only really good against other unique units. They're an infantry unit, so they're quite slow. And infantry units are often looked over in this game. So, really... The castle drop is much more likely to be coming from a Mayan player who is going to be able to make those plumed archers from the castle. They are going to be able to try and do some harassment if they, for instance, drop it here, break down the wall, get the plumed archers in. It's much more likely to see that from a Mayan player than it is from an Aztec player. So two very sort of different play styles and Arena does lend itself well to plumed archers. Obviously infantry is very limited because if you can't get through these walls then your infantry can't really do that damage. The Eagle Warrior of course, a little bit of an exception. It's not a standard infantry unit it, because it moves so fast. It's so good at raiding um, compared to other slower infantry units like you know the Champion and such. But the thing that the Aztecs have to deal with on Arena is the fact that a very common Aztec strategy, for instance, on Arabia, is to go for a, a pretty fast Imperial, maybe make some archers in, well, crossbows in the Castle Age, go for a pretty fast Imperial and make those elite Eagle Warriors and raid. The thing is, with Arena, because you start with the initial wall, if this wall isn't broken down, then you can't really go in and raid your opponent, and that just makes things much more difficult, which is not so good. So, going into this, I would say that Mayans, in my opinion, do have a sort of, a little bit of an upper hand. Not a huge upper hand, but they do have, in my opinion, a little bit of an upper hand. So the Viper's just got to Feudal right now. He's putting his Market and his Blacksmith down. They'll be down in just a second, and once they're built... He will be clicking up to the Castle Age, just needs a little bit more food, garrisoning inside of his TC, and he's clicked up at 12 minutes and about 15 seconds, which is pretty nice. We can also see as well that he's putting some Palisade walls down right here, just on this stone mine, and that's actually to check if Stark is taking stone. We have a look at the Viper's line of sight, we can see that, ah, look, there's a villager. He can now see that Stark is taking stone, and he is going to know that Stark is planning to drop a castle once he reaches the Castle Age. Now if we hop over to Stark's point of view, then we'll be able to see that uh, that is the case, sending a lot more villagers over to stone right now, and he's also up to the castle age, but a little bit slower than the Viper. Viper's just over halfway, Stark is a little less. So if Stark isn't that fast up to castle, it could mean that Stark is going to be able to take this centre area if he can get that castle up quickly. We'll see what he manages to do there. 
He's also walling in these relics. Pretty lame, I've got to say. He's also, wow, didn't notice that. He's also walled in Viper's gates here. I think he's probably expecting the Viper to make a load of monks try and take the center area, take the relics where he can. Obviously, being Aztecs, it does pay off. I think with expecting that, trying to wall him in there, and that does mean that the Viper can't get out of his gates. It means he's going to have to delete a piece of wall, and that's pretty lame, Stark. He's also walling in this relic right here with the barracks and some palisades, and he may even wall this one in if he wants to. He could do it quite easily. There's a relic down here, of course, and the other two are secure in the Viper's base, but he's up to the Castle Age. A monastery is going up, and he's going to be making some monks. Now, he could go one monastery. He could even do a sort of... Uh, I can't remember who it is. Is it Terra who likes... Yeah, I think it's Terra. He could go Terra style and, and make, like, four monasteries or something like that. Who knows? we we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, but there we go. Monk coming out. Wall deleted. And he's going to try and take the relics where he can. Stark, though, also doing the same thing. He's up to the Castle Age right now. He's putting up a monastery in the center of the map, and he too will probably make some monks to take the relics with. He doesn't have... Oh, wait, he does have a barrack, sorry. And he is making some eagle warriors. So is the Viper, I think. Yeah, he's also adding in some eagles right now. And that, of course, is just to help support the monks a little bit. The same as you'd make scout cavalry in a, a standard sort of Civ game. I say standard Civ, I mean, it, only monks, sorry, only Aztecs and Mayans don't get, like, cavalry or scout cavalry, so I suppose they're a bit less standard than the others. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Viper's going to try and take what relics he can. Of course, he has got one and two already in his base, so that's going to be two that are collected up straight away. And of course, that gold is going to start coming in a little bit faster now. And that does mean, of course, that he can afford to make more monks a little more quickly also. I'm going to go for this one right here. And I'm interested to know why Stark didn't take that relic already. It seems weird to me that he would wait to take that. Considering that his monk is literally right there. His monastery is right there. He could have just took it. But he's not doing so. And now we've got a bit of monk action in the middle. Trying to get what conversions they can. Stark going to get a conversion here by the looks of things. Converting one for one, but the Viper with four monks back here could probably get another conversion. Not oh, he's got to be careful though. Why is he not converting this? He's got the oh, okay. There we go. He managed to kill off these uh, this eagle here, but he did lose his monk in the process. Could have saved it if he'd have actually microed his monk there and actually gone for the conversion. But it looks like he's going to take this relic just fine. Start down one well one monk, three eagles for him. Viper with seemingly a lot more center control. He's going to bring out more monks right now, two at a time, continuing to put them up, or, or build them even, and try to get conversions before he loses his monks. That was a close one. Wow, very close indeed. Of course, these monks only have 30 HP, so they go down extremely quickly to eagles and start going to get another couple of kills right there. Viper going to try and get what conversions he can. This one doesn't have enough faith to perform another conversion. And there we go. Dealing with Stark reasonably well. Can he kill this monk before he gets converted? Yes, he can. And they do, as I said, go down so quickly. Without Sanctity, they do lack a lot of hit points. And of course, Aztecs, they do get good monks, but it does require a lot of upgrades. Every upgrade, of course, giving their monks an extra 5 HP. HP. Alright, going to take down this um, palisade right here, and Stark really not taking that much map control in the center. As I said, I mean, he, he was a little slower to get up to castle. He was planning on making that castle, but um, he probably didn't want to place it such in such a defensive position. He probably wanted to put it somewhere in the middle um, so that he could either try to push down Viper's walls, or so he could secure those relics and stop Viper from taking them. So far then, Viper's going to take four relics, and there is another relic down here. Can he see it? Well, wow. One bit of map that he's not explored, that's where the relic is. Maybe he'll find it a bit later on, but four out of the five in his possession, and his gold is going up pretty damn quickly, as you can see. Anyway, we're going to switch to Stark for a little bit, see what he's actually up to. And that castle is now up, so uh, plumed archers are being created. And maybe once he's got these plumed archers up, he's going to try and take some more map control back. He won't need too many. Plumed archers, of course, are pretty damn strong. He's got fletching on them as well right now. And he will try to take out as many eagles as he can. 
Maybe a little bit outnumbered here though, but even so, with these plumed archers, you can pretty much two-shot any eagle warrior. So Stark here should be able to clean up fairly easily, and the Viper is going to be losing this map control in the center. But at this stage, I don't think the Viper's too bothered. He's already got himself four relics, and Stark having the center control really doesn't make too much of a difference for him until now, when Stark is putting a castle outside of his base. But what is he putting? Where? What? How? What? There we go. He's putting it back a bit. I was going to say, he was going to put one up right here, but uh, he's actually putting it further back a little bit. But he is coming forwards with a castle right now. He's starting to make those plumed arches. And one thing to note is that Stark is on 1TC right now. The Viper is also on 1TC right now. They're both playing 1TC only at this stage, and I kind of like that. I really like to see games where the players decide to go 1TC and try and go really all out on the pressure. So, as we can see then, that castle going down for Stark, and it won't be long until Viper is losing his wall pieces, so he is going to want to try and wall this up behind, just to stop this castle from causing too much of a breach, as it were. Viper though really doesn't have much military, relying on this one mangonel at the moment to try and uh, stop Stark from uh, getting in or getting too close, but nicely done. Did manage to get two conversions there of those plumed archers with these monks, he did lose one, which is quite impressive. I know plumed archers don't have the best of range, they only have five compared to the monks nine, but even so that was pretty good. A couple of conversions got out of the way in time, and Viper's absolutely safe for the time being. Now he just deleted that piece of wall, so I'm wondering if he saw that relic down here now. It looks like he's, yeah, he's scouted that. So he's going to go and collect that relic up. Now that's going to be all five very shortly if he manages to do it. Now what about Stark? He's still only on the 1TC. Two castles are up though, and he is making plumed archers two at a time. So his military is about to skyrocket, and if he can actually... You know, get through these walls, get into the Viper's base, then he's going to be in a great position. But the Viper, just advancing up to the Imperial Age now, on 1TC at 25 minutes. That is a pretty good time. And as soon as this castle has gone down, Stark, or gone up even, it's going to go down because the Viper's already making two trebuchets from this castle. And Stark is going to lose this castle very shortly as he's nowhere near to clicking up to the Imperial Age. You've got to bear in mind that Viper's economy at this stage is going to be aided very much by the five relics that he has. Which means he could go up to the Imperial Age faster. You can see he's not even gathering that much food. He doesn't have that many farms, but he doesn't need so many villagers on gold. In fact, he's only just started switching them over, I believe. So... Castle going to go down for Stark eventually. He might send some repairers over, but it's a bit futile as they will go down, that is for sure. Trying to get through this gate though, and he has done exactly that, but a little bit too slowly. And the Viper is already walled up right there. And... Oh wait, he only has four relics still. I thought he'd actually captured this one. Uh, Monk must have got killed off right here. You can see the dead body there. And maybe he'll go for it again. Maybe not, but Stark does have a hell of a lot of plumed archers, and there is no way that the Viper is getting out of his base uh, anytime soon. He, of course, does have to have a pretty damn big military to fight this, this amount of plumed archers. They have got plus two attack and plus one defense, which kind of says to me that Stark is at this situation, in this situation, very much going almost all in you could say, because he is really trying to pile the pressure on here, really try and break the Viper where he can, and if he didn't think that he could actually do damage with these, he wouldn't have bothered getting those upgrades, or even making so many of them. Still only on the 1TC as well, and the Viper now on 2, is he going to build a third anywhere? Ah, a third down here at the bottom, and there's going to be 3 TCs up for him, so his economy isn't going to be in great shape. Also going to be able to get those Imperial uh, upgrades to his economy as well. And Barracks now going down for him. And really in this situation, the only choice he can make is to go with Eagle Warriors and maybe add some more Mangonels in. Because you've got to bear in mind, he can't go with Jaguar Warriors and he can't make Arbalest really against Plumed Archers. They're not going to fare very well. So his only real choice is to make Eagle Warriors. The downside to that, of course, is that plumed archers do counter them if they are massed up and in a small area and I think if the viper does make a lot of uh, eagles he can suffer very big losses 
if he fights one-to-one -one with the plumed archers. So he can't just do eagles on their own, otherwise they are going to die very quickly. They'll be taken care of within a matter of minutes and he's not going to be left with much army at all. He's also not really got that much time at the moment. He's... Sorry, he's going to have to take his time because he can't just bust out with five or six eagles and take on this amount of plumes. So Stark is going to be safe for now and maybe safe for the rest of this game if he manages to pull something off and actually make a big play with these plumed archers. He's looking for a way in. The Viper there with his mangonel and plumed archers, they do suffer against mangonels. Of course, they are fairly short-ranged. Mangonel with 7 range of course and that does mean that the plumed archers have to get close in order to actually fire one volley. So micromanagement is needed and if Stark isn't paying attention to his plumes then he is going to find them dead very very quickly indeed. So just going to put things on a little bit faster now, 75% speed because there is not really too much to see for the time being. Viper cannot really make a play here. He's got a couple of, uh, well, three mangonels and a couple of eagles. It's really not enough to fight this many plumed archers. If Stark micros these well, as I said, he can take care of the mangonels fairly easily. But he won't even need to do that. Stark's eagle warriors getting right in there, taking out those two mangonels. Viper only has one left, and Stark looks to be in a pretty good situation. Now, he could go in here. He would have to slip by the castle, but he could get in if he wanted to. I don't think he's going to make that take that risk, though. He is going to go back, but a pretty nice little victory for him there, managing to take two mangonels, kill off a few more of the Viper's eagles, and that's going to slow him down a little bit. Viper, though, starting to get those defensive upgrades right now. And we can see that he has got plus two defense, and the Elite Eagle Warrior upgrade has just been done as well. So he is going to beef these up a little bit. Maybe eventually he will get, well, he will have to eventually get Garland Wars, which is going to give him an extra four attack on here. Plus, of course, the extra researchers at the blacksmith for the attack. Plate Barding Armor on the way, so plus four defense. And, of course, you are going to upgrade your defensive upgrades first as he's playing against archer units. So he needs that uh, to actually get in range of the plumes. The plumes are left out in the open and the Viper can mass enough eagles. He can take them out pretty quickly. But otherwise, uh, Stark's going to be in a great position here to actually make a bit more of a play and continue to kill off the Viper's army before he can mass it up. Even though he's still castle, he's in a good position. A nice split by Stark right there, and he's going to focus down that uh, Mangonel very quickly, avoiding all of the fire from it, and probably going to clear up the rest of these eagles as well. You can see how quickly they go down. Even with the rest of the upgrade, uh, upgrades, they do go down very quickly, and... The plumed archers being so cheap as well, it doesn't really matter if you lose one to an eagle because they're just, they don't cost as much, nearly as much gold. So you can probably lose two plumed archers for every one eagle warrior and come out about even. So but Viper is starting to take some map control back. And I think Stark's biggest issue here is going to be with the mangonels. If Viper keeps up his mangonel production, then it's going to require a lot for, from Stark to actually keep out of the way of them. It's all well and good having the eagles, but they can't fight one-on-one -on -one really. They can't go head-to-head -head at this stage. Though Stark is going to have to fall back. But uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, with the mangonels that Viper's making, I don't know if he's still making many more, but if he continues mangonel production, then that's really going to keep the plumed archers at bay, and then he can use his eagles for other things, or if they get caught out or whatever, he can find a way to pick them off. Stark though, now up to Imperial, and the Elite Plumed Archer upgrade is going to be coming in very shortly. He's actually lacking the food and wood for it, so maybe not just yet. It's going to be a little while actually before he can afford it, but at least he's actually up to Imp. And surprisingly actually, still only on two TCs, he's not actually built a third, so going up to Imp on two. Very sort of unconventional numbers here. But as you can see, Viper trying to make a little push there, but having to fall straight back, because those Plumed Archers are absolutely going to destroy him if he gets caught in this little area here, so still has to be very careful. Oh, it would have been beautiful if Stark could have actually like made a play there and, uh, and and put a piece of wall down. But anyway, Viper starting to hammer down on this castle. He's going to get conscription just before the castle goes down, thankfully. But he really can't contest the Viper's trebs here. Viper's been up to imp for so long and the power of the mines at this stage is going to be in making the plumed archers at the castles. He could switch 
to uh, Eagle Warriors, but they are so much more expensive. He's starting to run out of gold in his bait. Well, not really. He's got more, but once this is gone, it's gone. You know, Viper has got the uh, the relics, so he's got an unending source of gold, which to make um, Eagle Warriors from. So Stark can't really switch to Eagles at this stage. He could do with making a few just to deal with the Mangonels, like he did earlier. But uh, as you can see, with with five Mangonels, all oh, onagers, five onagers out for the Viper, he's going to be in a great situation. So with the Plumed Archers upgraded with um, with Bracer, they do get seven range. But with the onagers upgraded, well, the Mangonels upgraded as onager, they get up to eight. So they're still outranging the plumes. And I think Viper here doing such a good, well, making such a good choice, making those uh, onagers. I'm gonna really be able to keep the plumed archers at bay and stop them from doing really big damage. Onagers as well, gonna <laughs> do massive damage to anything that they really start firing upon. And Stark here, he's gonna have to change up something. He can't just rely on plumed archers this entire game. He's already lost two castles. He has got two in the back, so he can continue making plumed archers two at a time. But ideally, he wants to be making a lot more than that at this stage. The thing is, it's not like a conventional Mayan war where you'd add in um, siege rams. That's just not possible for him here. And I think if he did add some eagles just to take out the onagers, then he's going to be in a bit of a better situation. And maybe even just to go head to head with the Viper's eagles as well. I don't think Stark can realistically take this game with eagles alone. Purely because of the amount of onagers that the Viper has here. Looks like he's going to aim for this treb here, maybe. Oh, no. Well, oh, yeah. He's going to go for that treb right there. Going to try and take that out before it can do too much damage. But the Viper is right up to his wall here. And his onagers are starting to do a little bit of damage. If they can actually hit their shots. Stark just moving out of the way. And we're going to see now this looks like it's going to land. Doing quite a lot of damage to those e uh, plumes. Even plumes, not eagles. But yeah, as I said, they are outranged by the, the onagers, so it's going to make it very difficult. Viper going in with some uh, eagles. Is he going to... No. Okay. <laughs> He's like, yes, I'm going to go in. And no, actually, no, I'm not going to go in. I'm, I'm going to stay out just because uh, I'm a little bit worried. I'm going to lose all my eagles. They're not cheap. 50 gold each. Has got a lot of barracks back at home, though. And continuing to build some more in the middle. Well, making some more in the middle. Lots of siege workshops as well. So these um, onagers, we could probably expect to see them keep coming. Viper could as well add in some rams if you wanted to. That would soak up some arrow fire from the plumed archers, but um, not really so necessary. As he has got, of course, the onagers and the trebs. Stark also researching thumbring right now from the archery range. Going to increase his accuracy and firing rate, so that's a good choice to make. Pretty uh, much required if you're going to be um, playing with plumed archers. Few eagles on the right getting shut down, and Viper not going to be able to get in. And the thing is, what he really wants right now is he wants to be able to get in there. He wants to be able to raid. But Stark, with so many eagles, uh, sorry, plumes, he can shut off any choke points very quickly, and, and Viper's men will just fall very quickly as well. Two barracks for Stark. I want to see him make a few more eagles. He, if he makes some more eagles. Then he can try and take out these onagers and then make a sort of push forwards to try and at least try and take the middle back. Another thing as well is that this area here with the gold, this is really important area of the map. And you can see Viper trying to take that now with those villagers. If Stark decided to build a TC on here, for instance, he could be in a nice position if he does that. He will be able to secure a bit of extra gold, hopefully. And... Um, try and make the most of what he can get. Just bring it over here though. A, a band of plumed archers. This is going to be really nice for Stark. Going to get a good raid on Viper's economy here. He is open. Meanwhile, defending this area back over at his own base. Going to kill off a lot of villagers down here as the Viper does attack this choke point. But we're going to see now exactly why the plumed archers do win. Viper going in one at a time, losing so many eagles there so quickly they die so quickly and, and in that choke point there's nothing that they can really do apart from retreat but Stark now in the back of the Viper's base killing off a load of his villagers and this is a nice little play by him he's going to be able to try and hurt Viper's economy a little bit we have a look at Viper's uh, resources right now they are quite low so he is going to want to get every every bit of resource that he possibly can 
even his eagles that he sent over or sent back to defend with, getting shut down pretty damn quickly, having to send more and more over. And the plumed archers, they just are so strong. The problem is, when the viper has got his onagers there, there's very little they can do. Now, if Stark continues to raid, then he could be in a great position. He's managing to do quite a lot of damage so far, and needs to get himself backed into a corner, otherwise these uh, plumes will get taken out eventually. The viper there, managing to take out a few so far. Stark kind of looking for an area where he can put himself in a corner. Now, back at home. Still a load of eagles out, sorry, um, a load of um, plumed archers out, but Stark now is starting to make some eagles as well. I'm glad to see that. Mines do get great eagle warriors, but he is lacking a lot of upgrades at the moment. Plumed archers then, finally going to get shut down by the viper, but these uh, eagles here have been away from the action a little bit, on the front line anyway. And did take quite a lot of losses as well, only getting out with five eagles, he did lose a lot of eagles there. And so Stark probably coming out on top with that trade-off. But Siege Onager now done for the Viper, and that is so, so important. Um, thankfully, for Stark anyway, starting to make some uh, Eagles now, and he's managing to take them out so quickly. He did exactly the right thing, taking those Onagers out as quickly as he could with those uh, with his Eagles. But now, it just means that if a, if a Siege Onager shot does land, it's going to do that much more damage to his Plumed Archers. He does look like he's losing quite a few. Viper now at the stage where I think, well he's thinking, he can just start raiding. You can see him sending bands of uh, eagles in to Stark's base. And he's going to try and do what he can. Looks like Stark has lost a lot of plumed archers at this stage. His uh, gold is very, very low indeed. He's got a lot of food, a lot of wood, sorry, a lot of wood even, a little bit of food, not much gold at all. And I'm a bit worried for his military. He's got 16, uh, 18 ranged units and 4 infantry. Compared to the Viper's 40 infantry and 6 siege, not to mention a much higher gold count, he is in a very nice position right now. And the Viper, with the siege onagers, is going to make very short work of any plumed archers that get into range as well. Finally up to 8 range though, but Viper with plus 1. So, still outranging the plumes, as usual. And now I think this could be the finishing blow. It does seem that way. Stark really doesn't have much military at all. The Vipers here, two trebuchets, three siege onagers, and a 45 eagle warriors. What can Stark do? He can't get in range. The eagles can protect the trebs all day, and Stark cannot get in range of this, otherwise his blue archers are just going to get absolutely flattened in, in an instant. Viper letting him get away with that though, wow. So much for protecting the siege. Um, <laughs> not really sure what happened there. Viper shouldn't have lost so much. Um, wow. He really should have responded a bit faster there. Losing two siege onagers pretty unnecessarily. And now Stark, he's going to have to try and do something here. He's got to take out as many eagles as he can. But without many eagles of his own, without that many plumed archers right now, he's going to have a tough time. Vipers took down one castle. If the last castle falls, then Stark... He's not going to be able to make any more military, really. He's got not, he's not got enough gold income or food income to sustain Eagle Warrior production. And the Viper is going to get right in there now with his Eagle Warriors, start destroying Stark's economy. And I think at this stage, Stark is really going to be... Nah, he's out of it. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing here that Stark can realistically do. He says GG, and there we have it. Game number four of the Medieval Wars, and uh, Tyrant take it, and you know, that game was pretty long, 50 minutes of in-game time, kind of a, a very long game, I think if they'd have perhaps not gone for the 1TC really high pressure, it could have been a shorter game, but I did like it, I thought it was different and not something that you'd see on the average, I suppose you say, uh, very common to see, it was, it was more of an unusual game. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. There will be game number five coming up very shortly. It's currently 3-1 to Tyrant. So yeah, stay tuned. There'll be more coming up. As usual, I've been Zach. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.